On May 18th, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted and it sent a plume of ash as high as 16 miles into the atmosphere. The top 1,300 feet of Mount St. Helens was ejected from the north side of the mountain, forming a crater up to two miles across and half of a mile deep. I am standing at the beautiful Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument in Washington State. Now this area is gorgeous. It's filled with wildlife and abundant plant growth. You know, it's kind of hard to imagine that just about 40 years ago, a massive volcanic eruption stripped the mountainside bare, killing all of the animals and completely destroying the forest. Now one region called Pumice Plain was buried under six feet of sterile rock and volcanic ash and dust called pumice. Now scientists assumed that nothing could grow or live in such nutrient poor soil, so they assumed that recovery should take a really, really long time. Only it didn't. You see, flowering plants called lupins were soon growing in the soil. Now, unlike most plants, this one lives closely with a bacteria that harvests nitrogen out of the air instead of the soil. So these plants could grow in the so-called useless soil and their nutritious seeds served as food for the humble pocket gopher. Now, these tiny mammals soon moved in to eat the lupin and in the process, they started to stir up the soil. So soon, new plants and animals could move in. Now, within about a decade, Mount St. Helens was once again a thriving ecosystem. No ecologist imagined that life could regain the area so quickly after such incredible devastation, but it did. And now, only years later after the initial eruption, well, you'd never imagine that this place was desolate just a few decades ago. It seems that God has specifically designed life to be able to regain its footing, even after a catastrophe. Now you see, after the flood, plants and animals would have quickly recolonized and they would have turned the landscape into a beautiful and livable world. And this wouldn't have taken many, many decades. Mount St. Helens powerfully illustrated just how quickly an ecosystem can recover. We're in Ape Cave right now, and this is on the south side of Mount St. Helens. This is more than just a cave. This is a big circular lava tube uh, where lava flowed underground here, and of course everything hardened around it, but the molten lava was thro flowing through this system here, and uh, it, it extends for quite a ways. Uh, we're just a little bit back, but it's, uh, it's cold and uh, a lot of dripping going going on here. So uh, it is an amazing thought to know that molten lava was flowing through this tunnel at one point in the past. When we think of volcanoes, we probably think of fiery lava oozing down mountainsides. What if I told you that when you think volcano, you should think ice age? Now, I'm here at a volcano, Mount St. Helens in beautiful Washington state. And this particular volcano erupted in May of 1980, and it was closely studied by geologists and others. It really helped us understand more about how catastrophes shape our planet. Now, Mount St. Helens seemed like a big explosion. After all, it released the equivalent of 440 tons of TNT, and it created what's known as the largest volcanic landslide on record. The ash cloud that it created even cooled the earth by a fraction of a degree. So what would happen if volcanoes were erupting all over the world all at the same time? Well, it's hard to imagine what a catastrophe of that size would do. You see, most of the rock record that we have today was laid down during the global flood of Noah's day. This is about 4,000 years ago. But throughout this record, we find vast amounts of volcanic ash. So we know that during the flood, there was intense volcanism. Mount St. Helens is absolutely dwarfed by what happened during that time in Earth's past. But what does that have to do with an ice age? 
Well, we know that volcanic eruptions send aerosols into the atmosphere, and they last up there quite a long time. You see, with all the volcanism during the flood, the atmosphere would have been filled with these aerosols. As they reflect sunlight back into space, cooling the Earth, well, they can sometimes lower the temperature by up to two degrees Fahrenheit. We've seen that happen in past history. Well, if a small volcano like Mount St. Helens here can cool the Earth by a fraction of a degree, imagine what dozens of massive volcanoes could do. These aerosols would have cooled the Earth's temperature a lot more than two degrees. And the molten rock from these volcanoes would have warmed the oceans. So now you've got warm oceans and cool air and continents. This caused a lot of evaporation, which falls as, guess what? Snow. You see, cooler summers means less melting, particularly at the poles, and so the snow uh, built into glaciers and ice sheets, and, and that's actually what makes an ice age. You see, eventually as the world settles down, the climate does too, and the glaciers retreat about to where we have them today, somewhere near the poles. So the next time that you think of a volcano, think of an ice age and how the Bible history and global flood explains everything we see around us. On May 18th, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted and it sent a plume of ash as high as 16 miles into the atmosphere. Now, the top 1,300 feet of Mount St. Helens was ejected from the north side of the mountain, forming a crater up to two miles across and half of a mile deep. Now, it spewed vast amounts of dust and ash into the air, and it also released tons of trapped carbon dioxide. Now, it's popular today to believe that man-made CO2, carbon dioxide, emissions are causing dramatic climate change. But you see, natural disasters like Mount St. Helens should remind us we really don't have control over the weather. <laughs> While the estimates keep going up, in 2013, scientists estimated that volcanoes are slowly releasing 600 million tons of carbon into the atmosphere. That's each year. Now that's only from sampling a very small number of volcanoes, and it doesn't include these so-called dormant volcanoes, which they now believe are also releasing carbon. So this figure will likely continue to go up as scientists do more research. If there's an eruption, just like what happened at Mount St. Helens, you better watch out because it causes a change in the climate, leading to a cooling trend from aerosols trapped for years in the atmosphere. Now, the climate change debate is really about different views of the past. You see, if you believe that the Earth is millions and billions of years old, and that the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica preserve a record of the climate stretching back hundreds of thousands of years, well, then you're going to have a very different view on man-made climate change than someone with a different view of history. You see, when we start with the Bible's history, we know that there was a perfect climate marred by sin, that there was a global flood that radically changed the planet, including our climate. This flood was accompanied by intense volcanism, which would have released vast amounts of CO2 as well as aerosols into the atmosphere. Now those trapped aerosols led to global cooling and eventually the ice age. There's been radical climate change in the past and truthfully, humans have everything to do with it because of our sin. Now this doesn't mean that we shouldn't be good stewards of the creation that God has given us, only that we have a pretty lofty view of ourselves if we think that we have the exclusive ability to control and protect the environment. There's someone a great deal bigger than us who has it all under control. Two different views of the past lead to two different views of the present. We need to start with the right foundation, God's Word, to get the right perspective. I'm David Reeves at Mount St. Helens. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to be sure you're notified about new videos just like this. And hey, remember, we're a nonprofit ministry, so all of your donations help us make content just like this.